This here is the best GPU that AMD has to offer. And here we have the best that Nvidia has to offer, the 4090 versus the RX 7900 XTX. Now the interesting thing is, this GPU should not compete with this GPU. And the question might be, well, why are you making this video if they shouldn't compete with each other? Because there's a massive price difference and AMD never said that it's going to compete with RTX 4090. But believe me, you want to see the results. Oh boy, are we on for a ride. Part of this video is sponsored by AMD Threadripper Pro, more about it later on in the video or in the description below. So first you can see the GPU name there, but the more interesting thing is about the process known. So because AMD uses chiplet design so they can splish and splash and basically glue together different types of things. So for example, the IO, you don't need the fastest or the newest process node. And that's why they've used six nanometer node for the IO, but then also the compute units and the comp computing power of the GPU is on a 5 nanometer node, which we have from TSMC. NVIDIA, on the other hand, is using the 4 nanometer TSMC node, and this is what they advertise, but one interesting thing is that when I look at the tech power of actual specs right now, it says 5 nanometer TSMC, not 4 nanometer. But NVIDIA does have more expensive process node in terms of the GPU die and the actual GPU. Moving on to the shading units, we can see that the 4090 has a lot more units. As you can see, 16,000 compared to just 6,000 what we have on the 7900 XTX. The TMU's RT cores, again, 4090 has quite a lot more, as well as the die size. It's bigger on the 4090. So all the specs, as you can see, are going for 4090. They're using the faster memory, GDDR6X. They have the same amount of VRAM, 24 gigabytes. The memory bus bit is about the same, but the memory bandwidth is actually a bit more on the 4090. 1,008 gigabytes per second compared to the 960 on the XTX. They use the same bus interface, but now on the power consumption, Nvidia pulls about 450 watts, where the XTX is rated at 355 watts. Now the card that I am using is from power color and this is the red devil limited edition one that's one of the best cars that you can probably get it's like oc a little bit and so on so we're giving amd basically the best scenario here and this one pulls 375 watts so extra 20 watts more than this spec in terms of the msrp the nvidia was launched at 1599 so 1600 dollars the xdx had an msrp of a thousand dollars so quite a bit lower Right now, I can see that these cards, not particularly this card, but 7900 XDX cards, you can pick up roughly around $899, so around $100 cheaper. The 4090, the cheapest I can find, is about $50 more expensive than the MSRP. So the price difference is even more now. So looking at these specs, Nvidia should be so much better than the AMD, right? Now, if you want to check out my test bench setup, then check it out in the description below. I'll leave all the parts there. But in terms of the testing, all of these cards have been tested in exactly the same test bench setup. The drivers have been wiped, DDU'd, completely new drivers. So nothing else is running there. They're both running exactly the same thing and the latest drivers available. Now, I've got both of these card reviews out there. So feel free to check them out to see some other comparisons. But I've never actually done this comparison before. I tested this against the 4080 previously because that was in terms of price more competitive and in terms of performance that's where it tried to compete with and all of the benchmarks in this video have been made at least five times and then the average calculated very often within single benchmark that benchmark does a certain test many times as well and calculates the average of it so there's an average of quite a few tests. Before we get into the benchmark results, let's talk about AMD Threadripper Pro and why this is the perfect platform for people after the ultimate CPU performance, especially if you want to use some of these high-end GPUs. AMD Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 WX series offers up to 64 cores and 128 threads, which offers unmatched multi-core CPU performance for creators. For programs like Blender, Cinema 4D, V-Ray, and many others, the 5995 WX 
holds the clear lead in the market. It features 128 PCIe 4.0 lanes for the ultimate expandability. Whether you need to run eight GPUs or expand your storage to oblivion, Threadripper's got you covered. No more PCIe lane switching. Go check out my world record benchmark score in DaVinci Resolve achieved with the Threadripper Pro 5995WX. Couldn't do it without it. Check out Threadripper Pro 5000WX series CPUs in the description below and see how they can improve your workflow. Now let's take a look at Geekbench 6 and you can see the 1490 is about 109% faster in the OpenCL score and about 2.6% slower in the Vulkan score. So interestingly, the Vulkan is performing better on AMD compared to the Nvidia cards. Let's take a look at Photoshop and this is one of the Photoshop latest versions. And we can see that the 1490 is actually 4% slower in the overall scores but more interestingly the gpu score is about 10 percent slower on the, the 1490 the same about filter score nine percent slower so the amd card actually gets quite a big win here in terms of lightroom classic i haven't seen this benchmark actually test some of the gpu accelerated effects there so i'm not able to give you exact difference in lightroom classic so we can say that let's say they're on par moving on to video editing and this is where things get interesting now i'm not sure if you knew that but amd actually has dual media engines inside there as well now it's very hard to find that information out there in the world, but when you actually go to Task Manager, for example, you can see that there is Video Codec 1, Video Codec 2, and you can see these two media engines actually work separately. For example, I can use one for um, encoding the video while decoding the video on the other one when I'm playing video back while actually putting a video together on OBS, you can see on this B-roll there. But there are actually dual encoders and decoders in there. So there's two media engines inside there, which is the same what we have on the 1490 and 4080. AMD doesn't want to say too much about that, you know, because they're all about gaming performance in this one, but AMD... If you can, you should talk about this more because for creators, this is a very important thing, as you can see from this benchmark now. So the 1490 in extended overall score is about 2.6% faster. But in the standard overall score, the AMD card is whooping the 1490s, but by 6.8%. Yes, that's right. The 1490 is 6.8% slower. The long GOP, which is extended long GOP is 21% slower. Intraframe extended is 11.8% slower. The long GOP standard is 25% slower and the intraframe standard is about 13% slower. Now the GPU effects is a lot better on the Nvidia especially on the extended score and some of the things are quite a bit faster on the Nvidia card but in terms of encoding performance in long GOP and intraframe the AMD card is actually absolutely whooping Nvidia's backside. Now, how is that? Why is that? I don't know. But now AMD does own another company that has a lot of experience in encoding performance. So those encoders in there, they're no joke. And Nvidia should be scared what AMD is doing because the driver updates now as well with software and everything. AMD has been working with the software developers there with Premiere Pro and so on. It is very impressive. And depending what you're using, if you're using GPU effects as much or not, AMD card might be a better option for you. Not just because of the performance for your money, but overall performance is better on the AMD. Moving on to After Effects, and here we can see the 1490 is faster in overall performance by about 2.6%. Interestingly, the multi-core score and GPU score are lower as well as the RAM preview on the 1490. So it's not all good news for Nvidia. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve Studio, where both of these cards can really stretch its legs because this software really utilize everything the GPU can give you. Now with the latest 18.6 
release. You can utilize even more of the things inside the GPU. Some of the neural engine optimizations, it really can utilize everything to give you as much performance. And looking at the results, the extended and standard overall score is both slower on the 1490. Now the 4K media score is actually faster on the 4090 as well as 8K media score as well as GPU effects quite a bit slower but on the Fusion side the uh, AMD card is actually better. So depending what you're doing the AMD card is no joke and can actually change blows against the 4090 which is not in its price range. It's punching way above its weight class. But the video and photo editing applications are not everything that the GPUs are made for. 3D applications and 3D workflow is where GPUs get utilized a lot and why a lot of people buy NVIDIA GPUs. So let's take a look how AMD compares to NVIDIA in the 3D workflow. Firstly, V-Ray. And unfortunately, we don't have support on the AMD cards for V-Ray. Moving on to Octane Render and the story is the same. There is no AMD support for Octane Render but there is support for Blender. So let's take a look at the performance here. Looking at the numbers here, ooh, wow this does not look good for AMD. The monster scene RTX 1490 is 234% faster. That's not just double the performance. That's like more than three times the performance of 1490. So AMD gets big whooping there. In junk shop scene, it's 161% faster, which is insane again. And in classroom scene, it's 207.9% faster. So the 1490 is many times faster in Blender than what we have on the AMD. Bear in mind, this was tested with the latest version of Blender 3.6. And another thing we can test is the Redshift performance through Cinebench R24. And here we can see 79 XDX scores 15,064 points and the 1490 scores over 34,000 points, which is more than double the performance in there as well. So now, for conclusion, there's some bad news and good news, depending which, uh, you know, camp you're sitting at. If you like the AMD card, the only bad news for AMD at this point is that the 3D performance really isn't there for this card and isn't as supported as the NVIDIA cards. In terms of video and photo editing performance, the 7900 XDX in a lot of the cases is faster than the 1490, which is a lot more expensive. So perhaps if you just do video editing in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, and you want a good card there in the mid class around $1,000, in fact, less now, this you can pick up around $900. I mean, in terms of bang for buck, it's really hard to beat this 7900 XDX because you could get the 4080 for the same amount, but the 4080 would be more expensive and would have even less VRAM, which is a big thing if you work with higher resolution. And the same for photo editing, you know, the AMD card wins is a little bit better here. In that point, I probably wouldn't recommend either of these cards for photo editing because you can go even lower and you wouldn't have to spend that much on these cards here. Now, I do want to mention that I tested this multiple times and I actually tested this with Asus TUF cards as well as this Zotac RTX 1490 cards. All of the benchmarks here, what you saw in here for the 1490 were the Zotac 1490 because this Zota card actually be found better in all of these instances compared to the Asus TUF one. I have another TUF that I'm testing right now but so far what I'm seeing is that this is where the 1490s perform. At first I didn't believe these results because I don't think these were the results a year ago when the, the 7900 XDX was released and you know we didn't have support for all of these things here all the media engines and things but AMD is doing some impressive things in the background and I think Nvidia has to fear this and I've got to say that if AMD really pulls it through with their stability then I think the 7900 XDX is a killer card to get for less than thousand dollars. For that amount of VRAM, for that amount of performance, for video editing especially, wow, Nvidia is really gonna have to lower their prices because if it can beat the 1490, 
What about the 4080? That's gonna get even bigger of a beating. So now I'm a little surprised by these results and I'd love to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Which card would you get? Would you still go with the 4090 just to get perhaps more stability? Because Nvidia has been known that their, you know, studio drivers are a little bit more stable, a little bit more support, or are you willing to risk it with potentially a bit more performance from AMD's side, less power consumption even in some of the instances, even though the idle power consumption i think is a little bit higher on the amd cards compared to the nvidia one let me know what you guys think i'd love to know from you because these are surprising results if you want to pick out any of these cards or some other amd cards i'm going to leave them in the description below if you just want to check them out as always if you do want to build yourself the best bank football create a pc then check out the build guides in the description below completely free and there is one for you whatever your budget is thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye Thank you AMD for sponsoring parts of this video. So if you do want to run more than one GPU in your setup and you're the ultimate creator for 3D or architects or whatever, then check out the Threadripper Pro 5000 series in the description below. It's an interesting platform because it's really got no competition at this point yet. And now it's more affordable than ever. So check it out in the description below because DDR4, you know, you can get up to two terabytes in there and uh, you know, it's more affordable than ever. Did I say that already? Yeah, I did. So go check it out. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.